I've been on a few warm weather adventures recently, so I thought it'd be good to have a little change of scenery. I wanted to see how I fared in the cold weather. A week of minus temperatures, fresh snow, freezing rain, the lot. I plan to walk across the Jura Mountains, right on the border with France and Switzerland. 80 miles along mountain tracks, taking me through unspoilt pine forests with the occasional stop in skiing villages. I'll be doing it solo. If you don't know me yet, I'm Liam. I don't speak French, cold weather isn't my thing, but I'm ready. I love challenges like this, it makes you appreciate the small things in life. I'll be carrying everything I need, I've brought some extra warm gear along with me. Snow It'll be the first time trying snowshoes, which should be fun. I'll be sleeping in forests or anywhere I can set my tent up. This place was a winter wonderland waiting to be explored. It was only a short flight to Geneva. I landed and I headed off to a store to get some supplies. I got some gas and some snowshoes. I'd need these for what was to come. I crossed the border into France by train and walked towards the start point. I finally found a, a place to camp. I need to keep it down because I think up there, there's like a farm. I'm definitely on a farmer's field. Been following a mountain road up and I just, you can see some lights. I'm following that and I've just come up. Uh, the weather's perfect. It's like minus one degree Celsius. It's not snowing, raining. Got myself in a little forest. It's, uh, it's not too cold actually, it's, it's just fine. So I'm gonna get this inside, make some food and get some well earned rest for tomorrow. It snowed just a bit overnight. I got ready, packed my gear away and walked the rest of the way towards the village of Sharon. Right now then, I am in France and I'll be walking across the Jura Mountains which sit on the border with France and Switzerland. I actually landed in Geneva and made my way to a little town called Giron in the east of France. Should be about 80 miles across the mountains but on my back, I don't know if you can see them. Oh, I got some snowshoes because it gets deep. Uh, right now it's fine, it's just a start. Just come out of the town, Giron. But we're going into, oh, it smells so nice, this forest. It's just a nice pine forest. I think it's pine. So, it's gonna be a fun one. Totally different. And I'm following signs like that, so it should be okay. Weather, it's all right. Uh, it's not snowing as of yet. It's about minus three degrees Celsius. So, it's looking good. Can't wait. Let's go. The snow instantly put me in a good mood. This is what I came for. So the altitude 1140 meters and we've come from Giron 35 minutes so it's quite nice so there's a panorama view but I don't think I'm going to see anything there it's just clouds <laughs> the snow is actually really icy so it's, uh, I'm not actually sinking in, so I don't need snowshoes as of yet. There's no fresh tracks, so it looks like it's just me. The layering system is vital in cold weather. If I got hot, I'd unzip a couple of layers and eventually I'd cool down. I made sure not to sweat or get very cold. Have a look at this. It's pretty amazing. People pay thousands for stuff like this just to 
come out on a winter hike and stay in cabins and all that stuff. It's cost me a flight and snowshoes and a pole. Pretty good. So I've got this for a week. Just smell of the forest and it's just silent. It's nice, very nice. I'm having fun. So on this walk, I'm gonna make sure I stop every hour, hydrate, because in winter time you forget. So hydrate, uh, just add some, it's starting to freeze up, so I'm just gonna have a snack, just something every hour, because it's a lot more difficult in, in winter compared to summer or spring. The snow, just the cold, you want your body just to keep creating warmth, so. Yeah, it's important. So I'm sitting down. This mat I've got, <laughs> that's coming handy. A foam mat just stops your bum from getting freezing cold when you're sitting down. So, yeah. Walk's been okay so far. Been enjoying it. I haven't seen anyone. Even footprints, they're covered over, so they're at least two or three days old. What a place. I keep seeing these little flies or insects. I can't tell if it's a mosquito or not. But how are you here, mate? That's the last thing you'd expect to be around here. How doesn't it freeze instantly? There he goes. <laughs> Just me and him. No shoes have gone on, and no, they are on the right way, I promise. There's a right and a left, and yeah, they just look like that. Got my pole. I don't actually need them yet. Um, I just wanna take the weight off my pack, so it's just down here, and just gets me used to them. But yeah, not bad. So. This is just for inclines and declines, the pole, but it'll help. Good job of checking them out because I was going the wrong way. I'm just too excited. I need to calm down a bit. So I went up that way, but I'm heading that way. Yeah, I've got some new um, snow boots, winter boots, insulated ones, which are good. They're not really broken in. I could feel a few hot spots, but since I've put my snowshoes on, I'm feeling pretty good. I can't really feel it anymore. So that's good. I just love learning new things and being in new environments. A totally different country. I don't really know French, the, the language. I can just about ask for a cup of coffee or something. Say hello, my name's Liam. Other than that, Google Translate. I'm all right in Spain and Portugal because I, I roughly know language. I can, yeah, you know, I can understand what they're saying, but here, no. That's what you got to do? I love it. Just different environments. You're all the better for it eventually. Especially a week-long winter adventure. New challenges whole host of them. It'll stay dry. If you get wet, you'll freeze. Layering system is important. And just slowing down and taking it all in. I could rush if I wanted to and finish. 
a day or two earlier, but there's no need. That is pretty cool. Just a track specifically made for snowshoeing and skiing. Wow. In certain parts of the mountains, the snow had disappeared. Cabins like this would be the perfect place to sleep at night. So boots, back to my, just my boots now. Not enough snow, it's not deep enough to, to wear snowshoes, so. Yeah, we just keep going. Uh, I've got about 20 minutes left until I want to make a camp. Uh, it's a problem now, because if there's no snow, I can't boil well, melt snow for water, so I might have to try find like a uh, just a mountain stream or a source set somewhere. I'll find something. Just come across a little stream, so that should be good. Fresh mountain water. Can't be it. Oh, it's so cold. It's definitely where snow is melted as well, added to the river. Find the spot. Let's come through just little hamlets and just farms. I might just have to tuck in somewhere. I'll find one. Don't you worry. So that's the flattest spot I can find. It'll have to do. There's a road right there, and all that way is just village. So. Yeah, this was kind of it really. But it goes dark in 40 minutes, so I'll set up and get some food, but I think it'll be all right. Being out in the elements all day, this is exactly what I needed. Tucking into a nice hot meal. You cannot beat it. It started raining last night pretty early and it hasn't stopped since. It's uh, it's pretty warm though, it's about 5 degrees Celsius. Yesterday it was like minus 3, minus 4. So it's a, it's a big increase in temperature and it's melted a lot of the snow in this area. I'm just praying that the further I go, the more snow there'll be. Because I'm going to be carrying these snowshoes and pole around for absolute nothing if it's if it's warm like this. So, yeah, I've got a decision to make. Maybe like at the end of today or maybe tomorrow, I might just have to ditch the snowshoes, which sucks, but I don't know, we'll see. But everything is wet inside of the tent. Um, I kept my sleeping bag dry. <laughs> just one of those things, you gotta deal with it. So, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna come into like a village or a town, I'm gonna get a coffee, because I'm dying for one, and then go on from there.
Yes, yeah, the first store I've come across. Oh, it was a nice coffee. I'm at a little village called La Pesse, and look at the weather. So I've been back in England again. December in the east of France on the border of Switzerland in the mountains, about 1,200 meters up, and it's five degrees and very mild. What are the chances? Uh, I didn't really plan for this. I thought it was just going to be really cold and snowy. But you just got to take it. So everything's wet. I've like prepped myself, I've prepped my mind that when I set up tonight, I'm going to be wet no matter what. So it's going to be, yeah. Gotta accept it. So when you put your tent away, when it's been raining, you can shake it off and wipe it down, but there's still moisture. And after it's been in a bag all day, it just penetrates through into the inside. And then, as you all know, so gonna be a wet night tonight. I think it's just give rain for the next day or two. And then please just get cold again and, you know, freeze over. So, just following these mountain roads, really quiet. So I've got enough water. I've got my meals, so I've got a camping meal for every night. And then I've got like a day's worth of snacks. I'll be passing through little villages and towns, so it's, it's fine. I don't want to carry any more weight. I've strapped my Woohoo! My um, snowshoes on top there, instead of on the back when it was pulling me back, that, like back down like that. So it's a little bit better. The freezing rain can make a person pretty miserable, but I didn't let it get me down. That would be ideal. Something like that. A nice hot tent with a sauna on the side of it <laughs> in this weather. Oh, wow. Nope. Keep going. So, putting my snowshoes on. The snow is slightly deeper up here and it'll take the weight off the pack, so I'm just going to give them a try. Stylish then. I'd follow signs like this. It was super simple. The snowshoes really helped. It took me no time at all to get used to them. Other than the odd fall here and there, I was pretty good in them. This is tough, really tough. I'm just coming up a hill and <clears throat> oh, the snow is just, because of the rain, it's made it all sticky and like really slushy and it just sticks to the snow boots or the snowshoes and it is just so heavy. So it's the first break of talking about an hour and a half. Uh, I'm gonna get to the highest point of today and there's, a, there's not really much incline, just a relatively flat, so. Yeah, it stopped raining. Uh, we're in the clouds, so it's quite moist, but it's a positive that there's no rain. This is really one of the hardest things I've done. This is, I thought last adventure was hard, but this is different level. I've only done like four miles. The itinerary was for 10 days. I'm trying it in seven. 
<clears throat> you're doing like six mile days. That's how tough it is. All right. So these the snowshoes and pole, they come in handy because they keep slipping because of just how slushy it is. And yeah, it stops me going over the edge. These are my favorite types of forests. I slowly trudged on for the rest of the day. Wait until you see this place, just have a look. So I just passed by, you can actually see it out there. I was just passing over these hills and I seen this place and there were some lights on and it said there was a cafe. So I came in, had a coffee and just by chance I asked, have you got any vacancies, any rooms? And she said, yep, yeah, there's this one for 50 euros, which is about 40 pounds roughly. And it's just me in here. So I'm just airing all my stuff out. Um, I was I was going to camp tonight. I had it in my mind I was going to camp, but this was exactly the time I was going to stop. So yeah, I was just give it a shot and here I am. So yeah, it'll do me good actually to get some proper sleep. Air all my stuff out and chill out. But just out there. There's supposed to be snow out there. She said downstairs it was unusually warm for December. She was even nice enough to give me a, a jug of hot water so I can do my camping meal. What I've been doing then to make sure my boots inside don't get sweaty and, you know, really wet is I wear a short, like a really thin pair of socks and just a, a regular plastic bag, wrap it and then you put your thicker sock on that keeps you warm and that in there just absorbs the sweat from your foot rather than getting in your insulation and just making your boots really damp and i find you can just take your sock off it's pretty pretty wet at night but you just put it under your armpits and it, it dries within a couple hours so it works for me and yeah it works for the boots the morning brought ice along with it at least there'd be no more slush hopefully just see the remnants of clouds just hovering over the forest. Got some good rest last night, managed to dry all my stuff out, especially in my tent. That was the main thing, it was soaked. But well, here I am, just walking through farms, you got the, the mountains with snow on them. But here, non-existent. It's about five degrees Celsius, so yesterday I was uh, I was looking at my map and I, I only managed to do about six and a half miles as a record low. It was it was tough yesterday. So today I'm gonna be following the roads as long as they're not icy and try to get the miles in. Hopefully about three miles per hour. I've adjusted my pack, it's a lot more comfier now. So, yeah, I'm feeling all right though. I'm coming up in the town soon, so I'm gonna get a coffee and maybe a snack. Even with the weight of my pack, I made some pretty good miles up. That was exactly what I needed. Oh, I feel so much better. So it's about 1 p.m. right now, and apparently about 4 p.m. It's, it's like an 80% chance of rain. So I want to stop by three, get myself a nice flat spot, set up the tent, and rest for the night because it's on about eight or nine miles already by now, and um, I've been walking about two and a half, three hours. So. Yeah, some good miles. Just come across this little cabin. Imagine if it was open. Um, I don't even know. I wish I could speak French, but... Uh, 
Uh, no, there's a little something there as well, but I doubt it. Road is super icy, dangerous. The sky is looking a bit grey. I think I'm going to start looking for a camp now. I was hoping there'd be some deep snow near where I set up camp. And there was. I used my snowshoes to flatten out an area for where I put my tent. Let me just show you something. So I didn't actually bring any tent pegs, like the usual tent pegs, because they just don't work in snow. And I've seen this trick where you just use, use branches or stones. And it's called like a snow anchor. And let me just show you how you do it. So you just find yourself a little stick, get the point where you know where you want to put it in the ground. And this is just to stake my tent out. So nothing's fancy. Just wrap it around a couple of times. bury it if you've got a shovel but I found just stamping on it works just as well and you bury it and then overnight it should freeze and it should be fine Seems like I got inside just in time. Pretty nice. The tent just collapsed right on me. Oh, I got so scared. I was like, oh no, there's a tree fell on me or something. But it was the snow. I thought it was rain. But because the snow is just building up, it just weighed it down. So every like 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to have to pat it. Just do something like that. So, yeah, at least we've got snow now. Everything is way slower in the cold. It's very tough. This was one of the most idyllic places I've ever been to. I couldn't believe I camped here. Huge forests with a white desert. Wow. Now this is a change. Look at this. It snowed so much last night. It's so deep. Up there, that's where I camped up. This is amazing. This is exactly what I came for. Look at that. <laughs> wow. What a place. I just got the fright of my life. Old man, you stupid. So he was coming up on his skis and I couldn't hear because all you can hear when I'm walking is this. So I was just in my own world and I just happened, I just got a sense, turned around. Oh, I jumped out my skin. He's the first person I've seen on this whole like trail, little bit here. 
Wow. Oh. That woke me up. Okay, so this is a proper Nordic skiing circuit. Just a person up there. So, I think we're here. Lejeu would be in there. There's another. Oh, this place is. <laughs> the only way to describe it is magical. It helps so much walking in the ski tracks. It's half the job done. I've just come across this, and it's a protected natural area for wildlife and massacre. So that is the forest. That's one of them you're not allowed to camp in. So, luckily, I camped up there. Cause it's just out of the zone. I eventually passed through a ski in town. I got some supplies and had a well-deserved hot meal. That is the best part of the day, stopping at a cafe. I needed that. So I'm just coming through a ski in town Lots of little cafes and restaurants by, so. So it's really foggy, can't see anything. So I've got about two hours left of daylight. I'm feeling good, so I might just keep going until dark and set up in the dark. So I've got my torch, so I'll be alright. But yeah, luckily there's no rain or snow, so hopefully it'll just ice over. I'm feeling good. Started to go dark, been walking for hours. I've uh, been feeling good, but I need to set up now. It's just started to rain slightly. I'm just coming through a little village. But I've just read, I can't believe it. Um, I Googled, Is, are any wild animals in the Jura Mountains? And they said 500 individual wolves. Where I am, these, these are the Jura Mountains and um, Lynx, I think they said. And it makes sense now. I've been seeing like snow prints, like untouched forests have been going through with fresh snow with nobody around. And I can see just little paw prints and it looks like dog prints. I'm guessing the wolves and lynx, it's, oh. It's kind of scared me. So I'm gonna go just outside of this little village and set up just in the tree line. I ain't going in them forests anymore, not a chance. <laughs> Wolves, what? Ooh. Yeah, I'm getting a bit cold now. Uh, so I need to get in my quilt. It is a cold one this morning, so right over there there's a there's a house getting built and I heard workers, so there's people in there, so I'm going to get packed away, but it got down to what, minus eight, just have a look at this, <laughs> they're just frozen, so the road is, is right there and I'll be heading that way.
Sun's out. Have a look at this. It's all quiet. Just following this long road all the way to the next village. It's amazing. So uh, the sun's on the back, so it just warms you up. And then you've got the cold air that cools you down. And it's just this is perfect weather for walking. I slept really well. That was the best sleep I've had last night on the whole trip. There's just something about clear winter skies with the sun out. I think it is one of the best views in the world. I couldn't help but admire the views. I'm about three miles away from a town called Moot, I think you pronounce it. And so it's about an hour's walk. And it is beautiful. Oh my. It's the best day so far, walking wise. Clear skies, really. Sun's out. It's nice and frosty. There's not too much snow. So, walking. It's pretty quick. Oh, what a place it is. Just through the Jura Mountains. They've been amazing. I haven't seen any wolves or lynx, so I'm still in one piece. So, I don't know what these tracks are, but. They're my boots. And there's, <laughs> is that a wolf? Because these are mine. I stopped there and I've just come from there. And there's no other boot prints. It's not a duck or anything. It looks like a wolf to me. <laughs> or a dog, some kind of dog. Oh. That is actually creepy. Maybe it's not, I don't know. It's amazing what the snow does. You see so many tracks everywhere that you wouldn't see usually. So I don't even know what this animal is. So right now I'm in the town of Moot and it is known for being the coldest town in France with record minus temperatures of minus 37 degrees Celsius. Just let that sink in. Very cold. So the reason it's cold, I'm guessing, is it's in a valley. Got the mountains, that side, and you've got mountains just over there. All well, the cold air just sinks and it is freezing. About minus six here. The village I stayed just outside of was about it's about one degrees right now, so it's a seven degree difference. Very cold. <laughs> you know, if a town has a cafe, I'll definitely be in there. This was heaven for me. All the pastries I could ever imagine. That is goodbye to the coldest town in France. They do some really good coffee. So, Letter BF, that's where I'm headed, final town. It's windy. So, up there is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Mont Dior. This is a bit of a mountain biggest one in the area. Look at it all. It's all cloudy. It's uh, starting to kind of like rain or sleep. And the sun's out as well. This is beautiful. There we are then. So we made it to the last town of Meta BF. It was about nine miles away from Moof, just before the sun goes down. I thought, you know what, shall I camp? But I was up for a challenge, so. Here we go, have a look. Nice. Just a little old village. I'm in this nice shelter. Oh. So I needed that. 
challenge myself in, in the snow, in the cold weather. And I can do it, I know I can do it now. It was, there were parts of it with no snow and the parts with snow were just beautiful. It was out of this world actually. So the Jura Mountains, amazing. On the border with France and Switzerland. Beautiful, beautiful. And my hands are freezing. <laughs> About minus seven. <laughs> what a place.